Hi, everybody. It's Ash here at API Days New York. Um, I'm coming to you from Nihilus, and I want to talk to you today about one of our uh, recent journeys with recommitting to developer documentation. Uh, so as you can see here, um, we're going to talk a little bit about recommitting to, to developers through docs. My name is Ash Ryan Arnwine. I'm the Director of Developer Relations at Nihilus, and you can find me on Mastodon uh, here at indieweb.social slash uh, at Ash Ryan. And yeah, so I, I'm at a company called Nihilus, where we are a single universal API for all of the email and calendar providers out there. So with a single SDK or with the REST API, you can build email and calendar features directly into your application. And so you can imagine that developer documentation is super important. Um, we are an API company and how developers are able to show up and self-serve on our APIs uh, matters very much to those developers and ultimately to our business. And at the same time, you know, um, we found ourselves in a moment uh, about a year ago where we really needed to build out a docs team and recommit to docs. And I found it quite interesting that recently I was uh, giving a similar presentation where a few folks came on to talk about the importance of documentation. And I noticed that in each presentation, we would see a slide like this. So uh, indeed, my, my presentation also had this slide. So first of all, why do docs matter? Um, and you can see I found, uh, you know, this, this insightful post from the head of uh, Google Developer Experts Program um, talking about uh, basically this data from Slash Data that you see on the other side here. And uh, so we're pointing out that uh, when developers are asked, uh, what are the most import important features that companies should offer to support developers? Uh, look right there at the top. On, on you know, the purple bar graph here, it says documentation and sample code. Uh, yet, you know, it's not just me, but other folks that like to talk about the subject that feel like they really do need to start with why does it matter? And as a matter of fact, when I did this presentation live at the event for API Days here in New York last week, uh, the, the speaker that preceded me was uh, the head of developer relations, uh, Joyce, at Postman. And I kind of snapped this while waiting for my turn to give the talk. And it was her giving this exact same message, which was, you know, again, like what matters most? And you can see here that performance and security, all of that kind of stuff goes to the top on the slide. But ultimately, when it comes to like, what do we need to offer in terms of developer enablement? You can see if you if you look really closely there, documentation uh, makes the top of that list. And so uh, again, this is just one of those things where we're constantly kind of coming back to reminding ourselves, hey, why do docs matter? And that's the whole thing, right? Is we're you know in, when we find ourselves in an environment where we need to do more with less. That also means that really, you know, kind of committing to developer enablement through things like documentation is super important. And uh, again, where we found ourselves about a year ago in a place without a docs team and uh, with docs kind of being maintained mostly reactively, uh, you know, we, we started on this journey that I want to walk you through right now. So if you find yourself in this sort of situation, maybe you don't have a docs team or uh, maybe the docs haven't really been getting the love and care for whatever reason that, that they deserve. Well, first and foremost, um, you really want to look around and try to do everything you can to stop that free fall. Right. So we're going to talk about assessing the situation and then just getting moving now. So first up, understand the current state of your docs, uh, you know, I will say that there's one icon on the slide that I didn't put because it's it's so obvious that most folks will start and stop there, which is all of the words on all of the pages, right? So of course the writing is super important and we're definitely gonna focus on that. But I think it's important to highlight that docs, uh, you know, isn't just a collection of words on a collection of pages. You're gonna have things like user experience that you need to consider, you know, user flows through your docs. Also information architecture, highly related, right? So are your docs mapping with how you talk about your product to customers today? And then also technical debt. 
remember that most of the time your docs is going to be on some sort of tech stack, whether you are using a, a SaaS provider or you're rolling your own. Uh, there's there's stuff under the hood that needs to be maintained and taken care of. And probably one of the first places you might notice that if you're running docs as code is if you have a bunch of GitHub actions yelling at you, um, you know, every time you try to take an action, well, there's probably something there that we need to work on. So let's start by looking at these three things in addition, of course, to all of the writing uh, that is essential for developer documentation. So next up, if we can find the problems, that's great, but we also need to find the allies and helpers. So recall that you know we've found ourselves in a situation where we didn't have a team that we could just say, okay, hey, here's, here's how we want to empower you to move forward. Uh, so we really need to do kind of step back and just say like, first of all, who internally realizes this is an issue and, and you know really cares about it and can contribute something? Well, first up is customer facing teams, because those are the folks that are on the front lines. And if the docs aren't serving the customer as well, whether it's through sales or whether it's your developer advocates who are serving developers at scale, either way, they're going to have plenty of uh, feedback that they could um, they, they could be giving you. Uh, and you want to uh, make sure that they know, OK, we're listening. Let's start capturing the stuff. And again, I mentioned the developer advocates as well, because they're out there, one, talking to developers, but two, frequently serving as customer zero on a lot of your API technology. So um, capturing their feedback throughout the process is super important. And then finally, engineers. Uh, I think a lot of times it's pretty easy for us to imagine that, oh, engineers could uh, contribute to documentation. Uh, but the reality is, you know, trying to do this top down, I, I rarely find works. I think what tends to work better is finding the champions and the people who really want to roll up their sleeves and help out and really focus on them and then in turn champion them when they make contributions. We all know engineers are super busy. And so kind of starting with that, now thou shalt uh, document your your code is is sometimes pretty tricky to pull off. So we really just wanted to find the allies and helpers there. All right, so we've identified the problems. We found people who want to put the sweat equity in to just get it done now. Uh, and then next up is leadership buy-in because like we can't continue with people, you know, docs can't be just a part-time job for the organization across the board. So we really need to get leadership buy-in as well. And so one, a few ways to do this, right? I mean, if you're coming from more of a, let's say, developer relations perspective as I do, um, sometimes you can scratch your head uh, per perhaps when you feel like you have to logically make the case for why docs matter. Uh, but in reality, not everyone's spending the time all day thinking about the same things you are. And so making the case is actually important. And it's not always self-evident to every stakeholder that docs are required and need investment. So the way uh, I think, you know, a, couple, a few ideas for uh, getting in there and uh, making the case are one, showing where it's impacting customers today. And again, if you're communicating with your sales team and your developer advocates, like you're probably going to have a lot of that case made for you in some ways, uh, or at least you get the input that you can triage into uh, making the case. Next up is where is this putting strain on the organization? I specifically go back to the engineers on this one, because like if the engineers aren't being given the mandate, uh, the, the mandate and the bandwidth for uh, uh, documenting on a regular basis, then now this is an extra job that, that's been added to them. And this is going to add to strain in some way. And lastly, what do we lose if we don't do this? Uh, well, ultimately, if we don't commit to great docs and to competitor does, um, then you know customers are ultimately what we lose. And so starting to make that case is super important. And then lastly, if you can make the case, you know, my, my goal in kind of going through this whole process was to make the case for hiring a, a great docs team. And um, this is another one of those slides where I'm gonna say, you don't see the words writing <laughs> uh, on here at all, uh, because that's super obvious. Of course, we want to hire people that are great writers and we should uh, look at, you know, um, their capabilities on that front. But in addition to that, there are other things you want to be looking for, especially if you're either um, building, if you're building a new team or you are kind of 
starting an inflection point with an existing team to kind of reset things. So you're really looking for folks who can balance strategy and execution because chances are you won't be hiring like 10 people at once for your documentation team. So instead, you really want to find folks that can zoom up to the 30,000 foot view and then back down uh, into like the 10 foot view, like really getting things done. Process, also very important. Folks who know how to recognize when a process is needed. Folks who also know how to recognize when uh, maybe we don't want to be restrained by process too much. Uh, there's a fine line here, and you're really looking for folks who can speak to that during an interview process. And then lastly, technical chops. Uh, this one could potentially be uh, controversial, but at least on a small team initially, you I, I think it's going to be incredibly important, and we found it to be so, if you can have uh, technical writers on the team that at bare minimum are able to work with their stack programmatically, right? So in the, you know, at bare minimum, that could be something like, um, you know, using handlebars effectively or whatever the equivalent is to be able to pull variables and dynamically to your uh, documentation. But it could go beyond that. Um, if you're able to find technical writers that are also able to jump in and uh, troubleshoot some aspect of things like GitHub actions or any, any other portion of your automation, that's huge. Um, and so we were looking, in addition to the writing, which should speak for itself there, uh, these three factors were things we were looking at when we went to hire a team. Cool. So we stopped the downfall. What did we do? Well, we identified the problems. We found the champions who internally already existed, who could help us start putting out the fires, so to speak, made the case to leadership why we really needed to invest in documentation, and then went about hiring a team. And so let's say you've been able to go on that ride and successfully, now we need to orchestrate the upswing. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, proactive and reactive docs. So here we go. First up, what we wanted to do when we brought on the new docs team was to start reactive, right? So again, we're still kind of in that mode of just getting it better for developers today, right? So what that means is first we're going to create open and clear lines of communication internally and where appropriate externally you want to make sure that when people have something to say that they feel like they've been heard and that feedback has been captured uh, and that's one of those things where if you haven't been doing this until this point there's going to be a period of time where you really need to build that trust Next up is uncovering customer feedback whenever you can. So again, like encourage your sales folks, your solutions engineers, your developer advocates to come in and, and tell you, speak on the customer's behalf. What is not working today in our documentation? And then finally, find and extinguish the fires. Again, we're not talking about too much in terms of process at this stage or prioritization, we're really just trying to look for some of the biggest issues almost by touch and feel, and then just get it done, um, you know, not six months from now, uh, not after we re-platform all of our documentation or anything else, but just start now. So that's reactive, right? And uh, a lot of times I think documentation teams can really find themselves stuck here for any number of reasons, often related to expectations from their organization. I find it to be incredibly important that you get your documentation as a whole into a proactive stance as quickly as possible. And so once our team came on, um, that was the challenge was really, you know, first three months, we're going to do reactive. After that, let's start getting into a proactive stance. And the ways that we were thinking about that at a high level were one, get involved in the product development and software development lifecycle processes. In other words, if your documentation is at the end of a waterfall, which sometimes it finds itself there, that's good for basically no one. Um, instead, you really want to get your documentation team involved from the outset so they can help you with things up front. And we'll talk about what some of that means. And again, at the end of a waterfall, your docs team can do very little to help you um, get things in shape and ready to go. Uh, and you certainly don't want to be letting them know about new features as they launch uh, with the request to document them then. You want to get them involved as early as possible. Next up is to establish efficient and repeatable workflows. Focus on efficient here. 
um, because I'm assuming that for the most part, we'll be talking about smaller teams. And if that's the case, then you, we don't want to overload ourselves with too much process just to get something pushed out onto the web. But we also don't want to YOLO everything. And then finally, uh, draft a roadmap and get feedback. This is the ultimate of ultimates. Uh, now you're really putting yourself into the visionary or you're putting your team really into that visionary seat and saying 12 months from now, what does success look like? Now, how do we get there? And this is where you could entertain ideas like replatforming your docs, for example, if that's necessary, or any number of other ideas. And so again, we stopped the free fall. Then we started orchestrating the upswing. And we did that by starting reactive and getting fires put out, building trust internally and externally. And then we start to move into a proactive stance where we're really looking forward and, but we're also involved in these internal um, life cycle processes. Um, and that's a great place if you can get there, especially to that proactive piece, like you're already ahead of the game. But I would like to talk a little bit about like where we could go from here, right? Going beyond words on a page to truly delight your developers. So here's, here's, the, here's the main statement um, that I would like to put in front of you, which is that docs is more than docs. So it's not, again, just a collection of words on a collection of pages. There are all sorts of things that your technical writers can absolutely do if only you empower them, give them the visibility and the agency to get things done internally. So for example, some things that we've been looking at already include things like onboarding journeys. I'll show you a little bit of that in, in a moment. Naming things. Uh, we're actually in a place now where our staff technical writer is involved in naming like large, chunks of you know, uh, our product are at least involved in that conversation. And that's really exciting to see. Um, so you know, if your engineers are telling you, for example, well, naming things is hard. We've all heard that before. But there are people that specialize uh, in these kind of things in the world. And your documentarians can be a great resource for that kind of thing. Um, also, uh, what about docs inside of DevTools? Because we all know that like some of our uh, tools are going to autocomplete, and it won't just be the API itself, but it may have some related uh, prose that explains that API and the autocomplete. So you want to make sure that your documentarians have uh, a foothold into that so that it's not branching too far away from the actual canonical documentation. Uh, same for putting in feedback tools into your site. Um, our staff technical writer just kind of got in and put in a couple of different feedback tools. So now developers can tell us what they like and why or what they don't like and why. Uh, also technical and uh, strategic uh, SEO. So we worked with our SEO manager for the first three months uh, of the existence of our documentation team and uh, turned documentation into something from something that was a net negative for our SEO into a net positive. And again, we do that in a responsible way. This is documentation. It's not some sort of like, um, you know, kind of thing that we're trying to just juice for results. But what you really want to make sure is like, you know, do we have duplicate content? We did. Uh, are we... Um, you know, using front matter in our documentation pages correctly. We were not, but now we are. And these are just basic things um, that we could be doing by working with our SEO manager and getting the job done. Next up is putting changelog and release notes out. Um, you only find out uh, who is using these things when they stop being uh, published. And we certainly did. Turns out um, sales teams are often big fans of thing, these kinds of resources. So getting those back up online was actually one of the first jobs that, that we put our new team to. And then finally, just like docs, features in, generals, in general, right? How do we go from collection of words on a collection of pages to giving more dynamic interactivity into docs? Lots of great examples for that kind of thing out there. And we may talk about just a bit of that here in a moment. So. Talking about onboarding journeys, uh, this is uh, the, the Nihilus dashboard. Uh, we just relaunched this onboarding flow uh, about a month ago. And we went from a place where you, as a developer, would come and sign up. And then we would kind of throw you into a traditional dashboard and say, here's your API key link to the docs and kind of good luck, to a place where now you can show up Tell us a little, you know, pick a use case. Tell us a little about what you want to do. So, for example, here you can see that ah, you came to Nihilus because you want to build um, a feature in your application that reads and sends email. 
cool. And you you build with Node on the back end and React on the front end. Once we know that, then we can just basically uh, give you this experience, which is um, you know this uh, kind of dynamic thing where you have code on one side highlighted with steps on the other side. Uh, and this is a feature our product and engineering and UX teams uh, work really hard on um, to to make awesome. But it is a platform where you can come in and then like really put content that shines. And this is where your documentation team can can really contribute some amazing things. And in fact, ours uh, our team was really kind of quarterbacking this whole process in terms of getting the content in and making sure it was great and doing what it was supposed to. Uh, so traditionally, you might not have assumed that a documentation team might be behind this, but if you can unlock their power, tons of great things can happen for your developers. And look, when you start turning docs around, whether it's in your dashboard, your dev tools, or actually in your traditional canonical docs, um, people do notice. Uh, I used to joke that actually, you know, rarely do you walk down the street and someone just kind of says, hey, what's up? Y'all have great docs. Like, it just... I, sometimes I felt like that didn't happen, but these days, I guess people do start to get a little more vocal about it. I mean, normally you're definitely going to hear if people don't like your docs, but this kind of reaction, right? Whether it's a G2 crowd review, people pinging us on Twitter to tell us that the docs were great, or even, you know, uh, the sales team internally on Slack telling us uh, that they're excited about the docs. Great work does get noticed uh, by the people who need it. And that's really awesome. So uh, just a little speculation about the next frontier. Um, so AI is uh, required in every presentation and podcast and everything else. We all have to talk about it now. Uh, and I found that you know there's a there's a few interesting ideas already afoot. Uh, so one uh, currently GitHub Copilot for Docs is something that you can go to. I think it's GitHubNext.com and request early access to. I'm super interested in this one. Uh, and then there's also this thing called the Docs GPT, which is an open source project that I think aims uh, similarly to basically add AI to make your docs more interactive for the developer, the human that is sitting there using them right now, as opposed to just a general audience. And, you know, uh, one other thing that I love to tell people about is like just, you know, one thing that you can do right now just for funsies and to experiment with the possibilities is take your open API spec and put that into chat GPT. Now you get to talk to your open API spec and it is super cool. So that's what I did here with uh, a, an example uh, API spec where I just kind of tossed it into chat GPT. Now I can ask it things like yes, no questions and then help calibrate if it gets it wrong. Then I can ask it multi-step questions and then help calibrate if it gets that wrong. And from there, that's where the magic really unlocks because now you're on the same page with the AI. And you can ask it for things like, hey, I'm a Node.js developer uh, and I do Node.js 18. Can you write me a getting started guide for this API? And it did a brilliant job. Was it perfect? No. Should we expect perfection from that kind of tool at this day and age? I don't think so. But if it can get us you know, even 80% of the way there, that's huge. And it's so much fun to do in the process. So um, you know, I would suggest you give it a try and just see where your imagination takes you in terms of how you can turn this around and use it for the benefit of your developers and your customers. All right, so some key takeaways. Okay, if you are if you find yourself in a uh, Houston, we've got a problem situation when it comes to your docs, well, here's what you need to do. Assess your current situation. Be super honest with yourself and hopefully your organization is capable of doing that. Uh, we were at Nihilus and I think we're so much better off for being able to look that situation in the eye and say, here are our problems. Next, get started now with what you have. So that means go find those internal champions, whoever can contribute. Um, you know, if it's your engineers or your developer advocates, if it's your sales team contributing because they are providing issues in real time from customers, that's great. Start there. Next up is uh, hire for well-rounded skill sets. Of course, you're going to hire technical writers that, that do a brilliant job of writing, but you can go well beyond that. And um, I think that you'll have a better team for it if you're looking for folks who also want to contribute to both strategy and execution, building process, and also you know, just kind of generally getting involved uh, across the board uh, outside of just the docs team. So um, 
then now it's time to get going. So you start reactive, put out fires now, but then you get proactive. You look for where you want to go and then build a bridge to getting there with the rest of the company. And then finally, consider docs to be more than quote unquote docs. Uh, where else can you get your documentarians involved? Things like onboarding, things like new features for the docs and, and so much more. So here's a few helpful resources I thought I would just share here. Um, so this uh, book called Docs for Developers. In fact, I, I love this book. This was part of how I made the case at Nihilus for why we needed to uh, build the docs team. Um, and I would say, I would recommend this to anyone, but especially if you're coming from maybe a more technical background, as the title suggests, uh, it's, it's really good. And in some ways could be uh, one idea of a roadmap for building out your docs. Next up is a community called Write the Docs. Um, everyone in, in Docs world seems to know about this community. So I mention it mostly because if you're looking to learn some stuff, like there's no better place to be a fly on the wall. Um, at least I, I find that to be true. Um, and they do have like a worldwide network of uh, local events as well. So it's worth checking out. And last one, I'll just plug a blog post of my own called Experimenting with AI and DevRel. Uh, and this is just really how, you know, our, our DevRel team at Nihilus is currently composed of a developer advocacy team and a developer documentation team. And for both of those teams, I really laid out in this blog post four questions that we really wanted to think about when it came to how do we use AI today in our day-to-day -day jobs. So hopefully you'll check that out. And if you find uh, any helpful hints or new ideas, I would love to hear from you. And lastly, I'll just pitch, uh, hey, you want to work for this, you know, work uh, for DevRel at Nihilus? Do you want to work with developers around the world building calendar and email features into applications like CRMs uh, and uh, applicant tracking systems and all sorts of other things? Uh, currently, we're hiring for a technical writer, so feel free to reach out. Uh, but that's not all we're hiring for at Nihilus. Uh, we currently have roles open in engineering, product marketing, uh, BDR, and a lot more. So check out Nihilus.com slash careers. And with that, we are at the end. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Again, I'm Ash at Nihilus, and we'd love to hear from you if you have any questions or feedback. Bye, everyone.